Hi everyone, this is Ronnie Bincer. I'm known as the Hangout Helper and I'm here to help you use Hangouts to get the most value out of them. And just a quick tip, what is a Hangout? It's a live broadcast. We're doing a Hangout on Air. It's live broadcasting. It's a way for you to communicate your message in the most viral way possible because it not only is live online, but it also turns into a recorded YouTube video when you're done. One of the best ways to do these Hangout things is inside what's called a Google Plus event because that's what I call a landing page. That's where a lot of people can gather before, during, and after your show. And the amount of reach, meaning how many potential people have the ability to see this, is part of the topic for our conversation today. So there are some really cool tools coming out. The specific one we're going to focus on today is called Plus My Reach, and you'll find that at plusmyreach.com. And we're going to talk about some of the details of how that particular tool measures what's called the reach, meaning how many people potentially can see the activity that you're doing inside your Hangouts on Air. So to help us with that, we've got a, a film strip of people that are knowledgeable with the space of Plus My Reach as well as knowledgeable with what the PR people, I'm sorry, public relations people and advertisers are expecting to see when we're talking about reach numbers. So what I'd like to do is I'm going to start with, uh, actually I'll just start with Michael. Michael, if you don't mind, I'm going to blue box you. If you could tell everybody who you are and how you're related to this thing, that would be great. Okay. My name is Michael Mason, CTO and founder of Plus My Reach. I'm the guy that's responsible for making the system work and checking the figures and making sure that it displays in a way that people can use. And I've worked with uh, Laurie and others to try and make the, the system something that people can use very easily, we think. Excellent. And Laurie, could you tell us how you fit into this equation of all this wonderful stuff? Sure. Um, I'm a principal partner with Plus My Reach. Uh, it was a, a tool that came from a need that I actually had to measure my engagement and find out who my engagers were on, on our interior design community events. And because I just thought the product was so needed, I invested and became a partner. So it's um, it, it's something I, I really believe in, I, and I, we're trying to educate and reach out to other hosts to, to walk them down this path. Fantastic. Irene, you are next. Okay, greetings everyone. I am a marketing PR consultant. I have my own business in um, a small agency representing a variety of clients. So uh, we're using more and more social tools to get messages to markets and a big part of that process is then reporting on the success of those. So I was brought into the loop for Plus My Reach, kind of as business development, to bring the perspective of those in the PR and marketing world um, who need that kind of reporting to justify the investment in social outlets and social broadcasting. Fantastic. So nice to meet you. Great, likewise. And to round off the panel members, Brandon, would you tell us a little bit about who you are and what you're doing here? Hi, I'm Brandon Smith. I am the founder and owner of Decoot Media here in San Diego. We uh, have Design Locks, which is, is our weekly Twitter chat, and my magazine, The 26, which publishes quarterly. Uh, the reason I got dragged in today is because I'm the one who has to justify all my numbers and having tools when I'm presenting to my sponsors so that when they're sponsoring Design Locks or buying advertising in our magazine um, or you know through our other social media outlets is a very big deal. Fantastic. So now let me let me pose the conversation here and then let's dive right into it. One of the things that is becoming more and more common is people wanting to figure out how do I get a sponsor or how do I get paid in essence for doing the activities that I'm doing inside my Google Plus Hangouts on Air. This is going to require us to be able to enter into the world where we're competing or we're benchmarking against or with along with other products that have been used and been sponsored by people for years. And so the ability to measure and show what the reach, meaning how many people, actually I'll let one of you define what reach is because I think that's part of our conversation and then later I do want to get into some of the technical as to technically how you define it with this particular tool, the Plus My Reach. So Lori, do you want to talk about reach for a moment? Sure. Uh, it's it's very similar to measuring how many viewers are on television or how, how many people pass by a billboard. It's that number of people that could have possibly come in contact with your brand. On, on With Plus My Reach and specifically what I was looking for 
was anyone who could hit the so the the the, um, the st shared stream. So if you plus one my event, if you share my event, if you say yes, you're going to my event. These are things that I know come into my stream from from friends of mine on Google Plus, and I'm, I love that it does because I find hangouts that I didn't know about, and uh, I get invited to hangouts in the future, you know, in going months because of that. Um, but we also wanted to know that deep engagement too. How many people are really engaging more than one time? Those people, I think, to my to me as the host, are most important because they are. I'm able to thank them for coming to my hangout. I'm able to engage with them back. I'm able to like their stuff, share their stuff, be, have a reciprocal relationship. And I think that you've got that number, which is to me the most important part for you as the host, and you really want to pay attention to who those people are, really. And then you've got this big reach number, and, and brands are just used to that number. They're used to the how many people could have seen it. And they like both. And and from our experience, this is something that was, was absolutely needed for Google+. Plus. There wasn't anything else that was doing that. Okay. So we, we have the idea that at least there's two, two ideas with this tool that we're talking about with Plus My Reach. We're primarily focusing or at least I'd like to primarily focus on the idea of reach and the numbers and how that ties into sponsorship and being able to impress the socks out of people, okay? Sure. But we also have to understand where the reality comes from to get to those numbers. But the other part is if you are wanting to improve the quality of your Hangout on Air activity, this is a phenomenal tool to measure from one session to the next and see whether you're going in the right direction or things have changed based on the way you're changing your content. So for a little while, I've been helping people in the Hangout Mastery, which is our membership environment, where we're trying to learn how to use Hangouts. So we've already had a couple sessions with you guys, and thank you for doing it with us. But this is public now. We want everybody to know about the possibility of using this wonderful tool to measure the reach, but also to measure the engagement. And what you were just talking about there with the engagement is how we can reach out to some of our top engagers, those that are helping promote our message and reward them if we can with our attention in one sense. Right. So that's and, and some of those people so that you would be surprised, but some of those top engagers can actually end up being sponsors. Uh, you can see that they might have watched your event and participated in your event as a brand and you can reach out and now they already know you. They have experience with your show. So you've built a, built a relationship with them and, and that would be you know a warm call instead of a cold call, those kinds of things. And that's a very nice transition. I like that. Back into the sponsor idea. So, Irene, for a moment, can you tell us what your role is when it's come to helping um, advertisers understand who to follow and who, where to advertise? Yes, I very often act as the voice of my clients' brands and use social tools to help share their messages. So. That can mean, you know, obviously they're investing in me to do that on their behalf, so we have to justify everything we're doing. And so numbers genuinely matter. And we want intelligent numbers. So you look at a reach number that's very large and it's a, kind of the dangling shiny object that can capture attention. And then when we whittle down to true engagement, it starts to, the rubber starts to hit the road, so to speak. These things matter, again, to justify where we're headed with social strategy for business. It helps me plan ahead. Um, I can carve out what's working for the brand because I need those numbers. Um, a lot of my clients depend on me to be that social voice and they themselves may not actually be that active on the, on the profile, so that, but they speak the language of numbers. Um, so as we move to a more social business model in general, and away from traditional broadcast, away from traditional advertising, um, it's really interesting how the role of PR and social media starts to evolve and to encompass more of what we might have been in the past defined as, you know, paid advertising almost. Um, so I need those numbers to justify everything I'm doing and to bring clients into the fold that aren't convinced yet, perhaps, that this was the way to go. They see those numbers and it starts to make a lot of sense. Okay, so I'm going to bring up a comment from, because we are bringing your comments right into the show. This is from Christopher saying that we want to know our numbers to impress our sponsors. So, Brandon, can you speak to the idea about this number game and how it's already been going on for quite a while? 
Well, I think, you know, one of the, the biggest things, I mean, whether you're blogging or you're on Twitter or you're on Google Plus or you have a website or whatever, you know, the, the biggest tip I think that's been spread around has always been have a media kit. In doing so, you know, media kit is basically just one big account sheet. You know, it's full of numbers, you know, to the layman, nobody really knows what it means. Um, but to those of us who are in the media world and trying to go to the sponsors, really that's kind of our bread and butter and our lifeblood. So the only problem with that is I can throw any general number in my media kit that I feel like I'm like, yeah, I have a million views, you know, but if I don't have anything to back it up, then, you know, what good is it really? Especially when I'm asking for, you know, a four-figure sponsorship fee or a five-figure advertisement, you know, I've got to have that backing in place. And the sponsors are looking for it. And actually, Irene, one of Irene's clients is actually a sponsor of mine, and, you know, I, I would never have had them if I didn't have that number basis. So it helps me compete against, you know, for example, my, my weekly chat. There are two other design-related chats on Twitter. For me to compete against those other two, my numbers need to look really solid and stellar. So um, having those tools in place definitely, you know, it's, it's that backing. It's that third-party verification that I need when I'm going to my sponsors. So what kind of tools are you using now to measure your tweet chat activity or the things that you're doing on Twitter? Um, right now I'm using hashtracking.com, which I think is the probably one of the best ones out there right now for Twitter, simply because it not only measures your, your initial reach, but also your total impressions, how many people contributed, who contributed, it creates the transcript. So it comes at a fee, but it's well worth not having to count out uh, you know, 7 million impressions for a weekly chat. So with hash tracking, is this something, Laurie, that you guys, when you were working on the development of Plus My Reach, is this kind of the tool that you compared against? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I, I was used to hash tracking reports, uh, tweet reach reports also, but I really liked the hash tracking reports. There were things I wished we had, and I actually asked Brandon also if it's some things that he wished that he would have to improve on the product, but it was... I wanted a very similar report, and I, I will go back to Brandon too because I want it, I want people to know too that you know we do our hangouts on air. He does a Twitter chat. We Brandon and I actually work together, and our media kits even we support each other. But Brandon, you um, you you lead quite often. We talked about the support. You lead with your timeline deliveries, which is our total reach number. Um, don't you? I mean, when you're talking to a potential, you don't say, I had 200 people show up to my hang my Twitter chat. You say, our reach was 5 million, <laughs> you know? Right, right. Part of it, I do definitely bring out, like, my highlight chats, where if I hit over 7 million, it's a highlight chat in my media kit. And then I do kind of a singular, like, weekly. And then I also do an overall. Like, we've been around since... September, and we're at the 85 million total impressions mark. So, I mean, that's a big, it's a big number for, you know, we've reached almost 8 million unique users since we started. You know, those are big numbers that, like, when the sponsors, Irene, I mean, you know, you know, it's like, you saw the media kit, you know, it's like one of those, oh my god, this is a lot of numbers, you know, and then Irene, who is the face of the brand, can go back to the brand and say, see, this is why we need to put our money here. So. Okay, so let's, let's talk about numbers for a second here. I... I'm new to the idea of these huge numbers, and so I'm sort of the representative of many people outside in Google Plus saying, okay, I've been doing Hangouts for a little while, I know about how many people are watching live, about how many are watching it later, and how many are interacting with it. And then I start looking at these reports, and I'm getting these phenomenal numbers, like 17, 20, 30 million or more, and I'm thinking to myself, wow, that's cool, if I only had a half a you know, 20 cents maybe for each one of those, <laughs> I'd be pretty good. Yeah. So, so I understand that this is sort of a shocker for some of us, and so I'm trying to get my head around it, and you guys have helped me with that because we've had chats prior to this show with the idea that we're competing or we're out there in a the world where everybody's expecting to see these numbers. We're expecting to see in the well, millions. Right, but with your Hangouts in specific, and I think I can say that there's a specific group on Google+, Plus that they have huge numbers as alone. Standing alone, they have big numbers. So when you get a bunch of these guys together in a hangout, their immediate reach becomes massive. I mean, when, you know, Chef shares your show and he has 500,000 followers, that's what would happen if there was a Twitter chat with, you know, a bunch of major brands that right. had huge following. Let's talk about how these numbers are... are 
actually measured and created. And Michael, in a moment, let's do some screen shares where you can show us this, this. But um, if, for example, Chef Dennis, which, which we just talked about, if he's got 500,000, and we're, that's just a number we're throwing out there, if he does something with my Hangout on Air event, like shares it into his stream, then the documentation that we've got with Plus My Reach is saying that it just had a potential reach of 500,000 people. Is that correct? Right. Yeah. You know, Ronnie, the, the best way, like, I, last night I was trying to think of how best to describe how impressions work, and I came up with this brilliant idea. And you remember, well, I think they're still around, Amway or Mary Kay or any of those mid-level, mar you know, multi-level marketing companies where you're number one, and then you invite five of your friends to join up underneath of you, and each of their five friends join five more friends, except for you have, you know, 100,000 friends, and now you've got, you know, 500,000, you know, underneath. You know, I like to think of it that way. You know, you put that product out there, and when they invite their friends to see it, those impressions count. And then when those people invite their friends to see it, you know, so it just keep going and going and going. So like Lori said, when somebody has 500,000, you know, followers, if just five of their friends join it, you know, it's or five of each of those followers join in, you know, that's 2.5 million, you know, secondary impressions, and then just keeps going from there. Right, so let's, let's just, for a second, just the technical side of it, if Chef Dennis shares it once, and this is out in the public world, there's a potential reach of 500,000. Right. If he did that a week before the show, because when I first launched this thing, it's a week ahead of time, if he shares it again, the day of the show, that's another impression capability of another 500,000, so right there we've got a million, right? Yeah. yeah. If, if he if shares he plus it. One, if he plus right. one that event too, that's one. If he shared it to a community, that's the community number time. You know, it, it grows fast, especially when you're talking the core group of, of engagers on Google+. Plus. So your, your little, your group that you've got, Ronnie, you've got a group of people who are all, all doing well on, hang, on Hangouts and on Google+. Plus. So yeah, what part of the key is connect with influencers and maintain that relationship because that's part of marketing, right? The ability to potentially spread and this is part of where the reach stuff comes in. So Michael, can you help us by showing some reports um, yep. to, to help us when, because some people have never used the tool and uh, we can tell them how to get, actually go to plusmyreach.com and then you can find that. But Michael, yeah. Give us a little heads up and then maybe come into some screen sharing so we can get into the nitty gritty and then we'll talk with the questions as we go. Fine. Um, I mean, as I did it, designed the core codes, you know, feel free to interrupt and stop me. Um, especially yeah, in if case I'm you're talking way. too long, I will interrupt. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've done some uh, screen impressions of reports that we have run. And right here we've got what is the overview, the very first report page that you see. Before you get here, all you do is actually copy and paste the URL for the event into our system. We do everything from there. We calculate the reach and everything. You'll see here that at the top it says total reach, and that's bordering on 13 million. And there are one, two, ten data points there. So ten reports have been run on this particular event over a period of time. Okay, Michael, hold on. See. I'm going to yep. interrupt just a second. Keep that up there, and you in the panel also, if there's something you want to bring in for clarification, I've got it blue box, so we can leave the visuals there. But when you say okay. data point, data point means, for example, if my show's next Friday and I share it, um, what's today? I'm lost. Tuesday. Okay, yep. if I share it Tuesday and it's going to happen on Friday, I might run a report on Tuesday, and then another yep. report on Thursday, and then another report on Friday, and then... Two days later, on Monday, I might run another report. These are what you're calling data points, isn't that right? Yeah. Underneath each data point is the date and time that the report was physically run by the user. Now, why, why would I want to run so many reports on one event activity? Can you help me understand that? Yep. The main reason I do it, or we do it, is you'll see here there's a vert almost a 45-degree spike. That's when the event went live. So we can see the engagement before the event. It's, it's hovering at around 2.53 million there. And it does increase ever so slightly. And then when the event runs, it jumps up to about 8 million. And then it keeps increasing afterwards. And the reason we run reports after an event is to prove two things. First of all, 
that the event is actually a landing page. People are still coming back and watching the video, still coming back and commenting, still sharing, still plus wanting, etc. You know yourself, Ronnie, that a hangout doesn't die when the hangout finishes. So For sure. We, we keep running events. If I run an event, uh, a report on that specific event now, there would be another spike because I'm pretty sure that people have commented. The other number that uh, we collate is the engagement metric. And this simply is a sum total of every action that was executed on the event. So okay, I'm going to inter- Okay, go ahead. Keep going. Yeah. Sorry. Say, for example, somebody hits plus one shares, comments, adds a photo, that's an action. We basically look at every single person that engaged with the event. Now, an important important point to make here, if you invite a thousand people to your event, and I say event because it's an event page, let's say Hangout, if you invite a thousand people to your Hangout and 500 say going, how do you know which ones went? And that's what we do. We actually only measure the activity of somebody who went. We can't measure somebody who wasn't on the page. We can't measure somebody who didn't interact with the event. So if if you have an invitation list of a thousand, five hundred say going, but only two hundred engaged, we can find those two hundred people. That's right. one of the right. biggest reasons that's we not use to say the that system. The people who didn't go, but they just it flash by them in their stream. They're looking through. You've been on Google Plus. You look through. You see this cool picture, that great post, this great article. Oh, that hangout, and it's just like passing a billboard. It had yeah. it had information about that brand? Boom, it's gone. But it's it enters your subconscious. That's why brands care about that total reach number. The more you see the brand name, the more you see the logo. You you're comfortable with that brand. It's it's. It's part of part of your social social conscience. So that that's why that total reach number becomes important. Okay, yeah. and just to to stress one other part, the total reach we're we're competing against other places that are always in the millions. And if yeah. well, it's a legitimate way to measure. With, you know, like Brandon and I, we we have worked together, and you know, his he has a Twitter chat. I've had a hangout, but. Yeah, they're both live. I mean, honestly, there. I the reason I I think so, I align Hangouts so much with Twitter is because they're live text and we're live video. Mm-hmm. So, as far as how it can spread, it's very similar, and how it should be measured, it should be very similar because they're both live events. Brandon, a question for you. Um, and You're then I have two questions. And okay, let me ask. Oh, let me throw this one out, and then you work in your wonderful answer with it. I'm sure. Go um, for it. With this tool that you're looking at right now, some of the measurements. Do you wish that you had some of that capability with uh, the other Twitter tools you're using, or is it about the, is it about the same? Well, actually, that's where my two questions came from. Is that one of the tools that I'm using has some additional numbers that I'm not seeing, at least on that particular chart which also do become important based on, you know, we had that conversation earlier about, you know, if the, if shut, you know, posts once, it's 500,000 impressions. Mm-hmm. If you post twice, that's a million impressions now. The question is, um, does this particular tool, uh, so, you know, I'm answering your question with a question. Does this particular tool also mention the, the actual unique reach versus just the total impressions? Because impressions really are, you know, how many times, you know, sets of eyes have seen it, general sets of eyes. So if Shep posted, it's a million impressions, bam, done. However, he has only one unique user. So does this particular tool measure, you know, the, the reality? You know, how many, uh, Michael just answered it. Yes, thanks. You could have said yes, Michael. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Michael, you're typing the answer. Absolutely yes. Absolutely does. does. And so, you can put it in there. Like, we actually have... You know who the engagers out. You can immediately okay. like very similar to hash tracking. You can immediately go out and you know for hash tra- like hash tracking. You can follow them. You can go out and circle them. Yeah, we we out. have a series of slides that we're going to try to get to. So hopefully they'll answer that question. <laughs> so, so Michael, it's back on on you for again. But Brandon, if you have a follow up question while Michael's showing us that, that'd be great. Michael, go ahead and zoom in on that a little bit more. Yeah, so no problem. And uh, <laughs> go on, Brandon. So the other question I had is, was Michael, you were mentioning that 
you set your own data points along the way. So, you know, you basically have to physically put that point in there to track it. Is this something yeah. that automatically tracks where I can pull it any time and it continues without me having to manually add in those points? Does that make sense? At this point, yeah. it's not. It's a snapshot of your engagement because of how we're, you know, how we're, we're co where we coded the system, but it, it is definitely a goal that it will become automated. Okay. Yeah. Right now we have... I mean, you do have the potential to miss possible engagements, you know, along the way. We yeah. have one on Twitter where I ended up with, like, a 5 million follower hit, you know, because this guy in the Middle East hit it, you know, and I never would have noticed. So that's something I would definitely... That's my suggestion. Mm -hmm. I'd no. love to yeah. see that. One thing that can happen, Brandon, is I have seen a dip in the numbers occasionally, mm -hmm. and then I discovered why. It's because if somebody is ejected from the event, removed, or right. they remove themselves, everything that they've uh, commented against and shared actually gets removed. Mm -hmm. So it, gets, it, it drops the numbers. So the but moral of the story do, there is treat, you, treat your guests nicely <laughs> yeah <laughs> one of the things I do is I will run a report a week after an event mm -hmm. and I'm actually surprised in the spike in the numbers because we still capture every single action even a week later right. the question you were asking though about um, the unique engagement it's right. held on the metrics table here um, let me just jump straight to the engagers number the engagers is the total number of unique profiles we found. Now, they may have performed umpteen actions each one. So in this case, you're talking about the number 91, engagers 91? Yeah. Okay. What we found in this particular case, that there were 91 unique profiles that engaged with that event. And when we say engage, we mean on or off the event page. So for example, if Ronnie has a hangout next week, I will receive that in my notification stream. I can plus one and share, and it doesn't even appear on the event page, but it's counted. If I then comment, of course, it goes onto the event page itself. Even though I may have performed three actions, I'm one of that 91 because I'm just I'm one unique individual, and I've I've performed you know numerous actions. Right. But we're You'll not see, we're counting the people who engage above and beyond saying going maybe, maybe. Yeah. So we're not counting those pieces, we probably should, but we're not counting the going and maybe because we're actually getting that information differently. Okay, now before you get too far into it, Michael, a question from sure. the stream. Yeah. This is Mark. You can just keep your screen share right on and come right back to you. This is from Mark saying, since the engagement metric is a sum total, or it appears to be a sum total number, but each type of engagement is not the same. In other words, a comment is not the same value as a plus one. How are we dealing with that, with this information that you've got here, or maybe we don't deal with it? How do you do it? No, we do. We do. I'll, I'll come on to that in a moment. Yeah. Okay, good. It's a good question, actually, and I'm glad it's been asked. Um, if you have a look further down, you've got their reach. That is the total follow account for all the 91 engagers that we found. Active engagers. You'll notice earlier we had that dial that said engagement index. Well, we're going to come on to that in a moment. The active engagers is very simply a list of anybody who engaged two or more times. So somebody may say that they're going, but not actually go, but then later watch the video and make a comment. We then capture that as an active engager because they've not only said they're going, They've gone and they've done something. They've okay, now you just said so, you just said something very important. I don't want to yeah. derail, but you just said if they watch the video of yeah. the event, so you're able to track the video views mm -hmm. to the event, or is that something that's coming? That's something that is coming because we um, we have a separate system that tracks posts. If there is a video in the post, we pull the video stats. At the moment, we're unable to pull the video stats for an event, for a hangout. Okay, I, I didn't uh, want to derail you too much, but I know that's something many of us are interested in because the event yeah. and the video are tied together. But We can actually, yeah, sorry, we can actually get the video views, favorites, comments, and I think shares. I'd have to check, but I'm pretty sure we can get all those stats on a video. Okay, but at this right point, let's talk, about, let's talk about what we've got with this chart right here. You were yeah, just talking sure. about active engagers, and that yep. means they've done two or more actions? That's correct, yeah. 
And are they public so, actions or private actions? In other words, just within the event versus out in it's the a mix. It's it could a mix. be it could be a plus one, it could be a share, it could be a comment, it could be a photograph, an image added to the event page. And then you'll see that we've got active reach, which is re just very simply the follower count for those 69 engagers. Now, you remember earlier we talked about the engagement metric. That's the total number of actions performed, and it includes everything, be it on the event page, be it off the event page. And the engagement index, if anybody's got a calculator to hand, is very simple. It's the engagers divided by the active engagers. So it's an indication of how engaging the event was. You may get 200 people that say they're going, but if only 50 of them engage and comment and talk and, and share, etc., that would give you an engagement index of, what, 25%? So we get people that frequently say to us, oh, my engagement index was only around 50 60%. That's a good number. But in order to increase it, it's very simple. Engage with the audience through the comments or through the video and encourage them to ask, ask questions, that kind of thing that drives up the engagement index. The total reach, the number that we were talking about earlier, that's actually the follower count for the, the users who engaged publicly. So we don't count the comments because that doesn't reach the public stream. But what we do count is anything public, for example, a comment, uh, sorry, a share, a plus one, anything that would go into that, that person's follower stream. So if I share your event, for example, Ronnie, that goes to my followers. If I hit plus one, they can see that too. So we try to uh, find every, pretty much every action we can. And I know some people will get uh, quite high numbers. And when I look at the engagers for that event, it's pretty clear why the numbers are high. They've got people that are following them and engaging as well with 300, 500,000 followers, or in one case, five, six million followers. Somebody with that kind of follower count only has to make two shares, and you can imagine how high the numbers get. Okay, let me jump in here for a second. Irene, I'm going to ask you a question here. You're looking at this report, um, and you're talking to an advertiser, a potential advertiser. What is it that you're going to tell them from this report that they should be paying attention to? I, I, what I really like about this report is that it offers the big and it starts to whittle down to the more meaningful because I like to bring some human intelligence to any kind of report I'm doing related to social engagement. So again, a lot of folks, especially if they're not constantly using these kind of tools and don't see reporting of this nature all the time, their eye will be drawn to that big number, understandably so. But then what I want them to realize is the value of when you whittle down to real engagement. So that it gives me the platform to walk them through what this really means. And um, as you well know, in, in traditional like direct mail marketing or anything like that back in the day, and some of those things still apply out in the world, you, know, you want a large pool because it the more the merrier to whittle down to people who are actually going to engage. So again, a big number may seem very lofty and how in the world did I attain that? You know, and, and obviously we legitimately attain that number, but my point is the broader the scope, the more potential meaningful engagement, people who might make a decision or start caring about a brand, that just expands our opportunity. So again, that the main thing for me at working on behalf of brands in deciding what's the best way um, to bring people into the fold is it gives me a roadmap to walk them through what this all really means. So from a PR perspective, then the way these numbers are and you're guiding an advertiser, um, is there anything that you think from this report that seems odd or is this pretty legit? Well, I, I will fully acknowledge I understand from whence these numbers come. So they make sense to me. You know, if I were new to it and hadn't um, under had no understanding of how the numbers were compiled, you know, I might have questions there. Um, these are familiar to other tools that I use, so it's not arbitrary and out of nowhere, so I can kind of intelligently fill in the blanks. And, and my clients, obviously, at this point, we've been doing Twitter chats for a long time, and um, so they're used to seeing similar numbers. Um, so again, my learning curve with the folks that I deal with on a regular basis 
is lessened at this point, but should I be dealing with somebody who's a total newbie, sure, I'm going to have to give some background so they would understand. So let's let's look at the report. I'm, I'm blue boxing the report again here, Michael. Um, and this is for you, Irene, to give a response to. Um, with the information there that shows under the description, is there enough information there, you think, for the average advertiser to be able to pick it up and know what to do with it? In other words, help them understand where these numbers came from? Yeah, then, then you'd want to put some skin on it and maybe talk them through who some of those engagers were, but this start, this is a, an excellent way to start that conversation. Um, with any of these things, I'm cut from the cloth where I want to put flesh on the bones. I want them to understand who those engagers are because eventually that's where it starts to mean something. Um, you know, I, it's ironic that Brandon is here. We have worked with him on behalf of one of my clients in particular um, several times, and that client knows Brandon as a human being now because um, he's more than just his brand, so it starts to mean even more. So, yes, um, starting at the point with numbers and how those things whittle down gets us engaged, and then I want to take it a step further, and that's my job, is to then talk about who those engagers are. Because uh, the influencers who come and spike your numbers, that's phenomenal. But what I want is the people that they influence. That, that highfalutin big deal person may or may not be somebody who would make a brand decision, um, but the people who follow them are. So the irony is I want those big numbers because that reflects that it increased my pool of people who might make a decision and start caring about my client's brand. Yeah, you got to watch out for those highfalutin folks, you know. I know. <laughs> okay. So, Michael, <laughs> Michael, we're back to the, your, your screen share here for a moment. And just so you know, we've only got about nine minutes before we're going to have to end this, uh, this expose. Um, okay. The info. So jump ahead to the next part that you wanted to point out to us so that we can see the data. Yep. Um, if you go on to the next page of the report, you get three sections, top five engagers, active engagers, and all engagers. And this is basically how it's presented. The engager, the follower count, or the plus one count in the case of a brand, and a link to their page as well, their profile. Okay. And then uh, the next part, and, and it, yeah, okay, just keep going. I don't want to interrupt yep. and get the flow going. I, I, I do a lot of squirrels, you know. Oh, squirrel, shiny thing, what's that? And <laughs> Yeah, one of the things we do, and we recommend everybody else does as well, there's a separate table underneath here that says active engagers. We actually go to their profile, create a circle, so that we know when we're sending a message to that circle, every single one of those people engaged with the event in some way probably two ways or more because they're active engagers and we use that as a tool to encourage people to come back to the next uh, hangout like we've got one on Thursday for example and I will run a report probably tomorrow go to the active engagers add them to a circle send them a message reminding them of the event and week on week we get an average of around five to ten percent more live viewers and a lot more people engaging with the event, so it helps increase the audience as well, which I think is great. Okay, let me let me just jump in for a second. Maybe one or two more screenshots, and then we're going to do a wrap up. So just so you yeah, have an sure. idea. Of the flow. This was okay. actually uh, a screenshot I took, and it was a hangout that happened today from Epicurious. And the reason I took this screenshot was because obviously you can see the top engager for them for their hangout, and the reason their hangout was had such huge numbers was, was because they have huge numbers. So they were engaging in their event. Um, they didn't actually have a whole lot of people who showed up to their event, but their event had huge numbers because of themselves. And that might be something you have to also um, understand if you're a brand out there and you're putting, you're putting up the numbers that you are putting out there, that it's really, it, you know, some of it is going out to your own, your own brand numbers. Right, but of course if your brand is new to the platform, you may not have a lot of numbers, so you do need to get these other Yes, and I have, a, I have a screenshot of a Hangout from that. Michael, if you, I don't, I don't see yep. the report. Is this, is the report up right now? Yep. Okay, so that is another, another Hangout that I, a screenshot I took, I didn't share the brand, but they are someone who, you know, very first Hangout, and they were quite happy. They're not big on Google Plus yet, and they're trying to grow their Google Plus engagement. 
and this was the very first attempt at a hangout. And they got 34 people who engaged with it, and they got 74,000. And as a brand, they were pretty happy with that. But you can imagine if they met Ronnie Bitzer or if they met, you know, some of the other HOA hosts that are out there, and they worked with them to get them to, you know, work both together. How big that event would have been as a first endeavor? Us highfalutin folk, right? Yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> okay, so. Exactly. Um, we, we've we've got some good stuff here. I do want to do a wrap up so that we don't go over time wise. Is there one more you have to show us, Michael, or should I go back to the sum up summary? Oh. <laughs> I think there was one more. It was an Oprah. It was an Oprah event, but it's just to show you that um, you know that, that that there are big numbers depending on who is who is participating. It could be you. It could you know you yourself, Ronnie. You have great a lot of followers. So when you do an event, it's huge. When a brand who's a big brand, who just, who's been on Google Plus for a while and has built built up a following, they they might actually get a few, and they might get um, a big engagement number, but most of that engagement number might be themselves. So they really don't have an audience. Um, so it really is about you know that working together process. You know, someone who's really experienced with Hangouts, somebody who a big brand who might have a following of their own. Okay, great. We no. can't forget that it's saved to YouTube. So they have two lives. They have that, you know, while they're going on live interaction, all of the hangout engagements that they might get, and then they, they exist on YouTube. I mean, it's immediately by nature two landing pages. It's yep. a meeting by nature cross platform. It's immediate by nature, you know, a, a, a long lasting and and piece of content that could be found on search. Okay, so I do want to point out something about this tool, plusmyreach.com. Have I said it enough, Michael, for you? Is that good? <laughs> okay, so one, one of the things about the tool that's very, very interesting is the fact that you can go to other people's Hangout events, get their URL for that particular event, and you can run your own report on it. So you can actually compare what's going on in your space and see what kind of interaction you're getting who are the people that are interacting with them, and you can harvest data, in essence, from that. So I see that as very helpful and valuable for those that are just starting out trying to dig in. As well, if you're a, a, an advertiser, you can use the tool to help clarify and document, in essence, that the information that you've been getting has some legitimacy because this is a tool that you can use to run the report on, on your own. Now, Michael, quickly, I don't know if you can, but really quickly, can you tell us what's not shared publicly with everybody but is available for you when you're running a report on your own activity? Or is that a tricky question? Should I have not asked it? <laughs> oh, I think you're muted, Michael. You're muted, Michael. We can't hear you, believe it or not. No, I'm not. <laughs> You've been playing with squirrels. Yes, go ahead. I've been playing with squirrels, yeah. <laughs> the things that are hidden uh, from public view. Uh, the active engagers reach on the metric page, the report summary underneath of all the recent reports you've run. So if you share the page, the potential sponsor, whoever, guest, whoever, won't see that. You cannot share the uh, engagers because of data protection, of course. And that's pretty much it, I think. So there's still a lot of data that could be harvested or seen if others have gone to your event and put it into the tool. And the other thing I think that's really handy is there's like, I don't know, four or five different reports that are pulled. You can yeah. easily share those with a link, can't you? You can just give a link to someone and they can come grab that report. Yeah, I'm actually just going to pull up our report now and do a very quick screen share on that. Okay. In the meantime, because we've only got a couple minutes left, is there anything someone else like Brandon, Irene, or Lori, something you want to bring to the focus that we haven't yet brought up in a minute or less? <laughs> well, one of the things I really want to say, and it's something that kind of bothers me about Google Plus, we all we have a lot of great engagers here who you know engage with e with each other, but there are brands right now who are trying with Hangouts, and you want to get sponsors, you want. To, you're, you're most like your, your easy way in is going to be to work with companies who are already trying to do Hangouts and paying attention to that, that who is on Hangouts right now and promoting the bigger brands and the events that you see that are really fantastic. It's going to be good for us all, I think. 
I think that's a, that's so, it's not really about plus my reach, but it's about how how we need to make hangouts even better. Let me ask if I understood that way right. Uh, you're saying that if there's a new brand and it's a big brand and they're just not very popular yet on Google Plus, you should go and share their stuff and start interacting with it because it may help you in the long run. Is that what you mean? Well, it helps that brand, of course, but yeah, I mean, if you if they get to know you and your product fits your hangout fits well with their with their product line it would be a great conversation starter but I'm not saying to do it with a tactic but but definitely you can build relationships with brands that are already trying to do hangouts now and you certainly can can reach out to them about what you're doing and how that might how you might you know work together okay Michael did you have a report you wanted to the ability to share a report or show people how they can grab a report that you've built Yep. Uh, just one second. Yeah. Uh, get the right screen share. And I saw in the comments that there's going to be, we're going to go and address those questions that we just didn't have time to bring up on screen. Yep. We always think we've got plenty of time and we never do. So <laughs> here you go. Two, two pages that can be shared publicly are the metrics page and the overview page. Every one of the, well, every one of them, both of them have a short link URL here that you can share with people. If you print the report, and you've branded the report using the menu option available down here, report branding, it will actually display, it will print out with your customized branding, your logo, and contact details. So you could print that to a PDF if you wanted to, couldn't you? I actually use, I think it's QPDF Factory or something like that to generate my PDFs when I send something to print, yeah. Okay. Um, okay, we're out of time. <laughs> okay, so here's, <laughs> here's the deal. Um, I try to help you learn what you need to know about Hangouts. Join the Hangout Mastery Group. That's a membership place. It's a phenomenal place where you can meet and learn more and more details about this stuff. My, I know Michael will address some of the technical questions if you've got them um, about Plus My Reach, or you can just ping Pepe, which is the bird, yep. um, for Plus My Reach, and um, you'll see Pepe in the event. All right. So thank you, everyone, for watching it live. And for you in the film strip, I really appreciate you coming here. Our goal, hopefully it's helped you, is to help you understand this reach and what it means and how it's measured and how you can use it to your advantage and not to be so scared about the big numbers. But they are real and they are legit and they're useful to compare and contrast against other tools that are using these live activities. And so that's why we need to have them and it's a great thing. Thanks for making the tool, and thank you for being in the film strip and for watching live. We'll see you in another Hangout soon. Bye now.